The technology has taken us now down to the size of a water fuel injector. In order to run your car in water, the only thing we need to do is replace your spark plugs. Hook it to a computer system, take a water tank, feed the water under pressure around 125 uh, pounds of pressure. The water is converted, goes through a resonant cavity, it's converted into thermal explosive energy on demand that occurs inside the engine. Furthermore, the design technology of the water fuel injector pushes out the water, pushes out any ambient air in the process, and as a result, when the water fills the resonant cavity, and it's now, uh, when high voltage uh, hits it, now converts it, liberates the gases from the water, ionizes it, and then goes into spark ignition. It has minimal amount of interaction with the ambient air, so therefore you knock down any form of nitrous oxide, which is minimal anyhow, to almost an absolutely negligible factor. So the water fuel injector now can fit into an, any internal combustion engine, as you see right here, and simply regulate the water flow in reference to the applied pulse voltage frequency electronically. Go ahead. You remember I had mentioned that the same engineering design, specification of one system would apply to all systems regardless of size. Did I not say that? Here's an example of the water fuel injectors as you see it that replaces your spark plug. Go ahead. Here's shown uh, in place in a, uh, a Volkswagen uh, engine. You'll see a dune buggy running on the water. Go ahead. This is the world's fastest Corvette. It broke the 271-mile-an-hour uh, speed record. We're taking the water fuel uh, injector technology, hooking it up to it, and uh, that's a seven-horsepower engine. We're now increasing it to... Uh, 1,000 horsepower because we can control the energy going into the engine and as a result we're going to try to break the world's uh, land record with that uh, car. Go ahead. This shows where we're hooking up to an Alaskan um, Bushmaster in order to break the aviation history and run, run it on water. Go ahead. This is where the injectors are now put into a tubular cylindrical arrangement in order to supply heat to the existing furnace or to a uh, steel mill. Go ahead. This is an example of the injectors now being retrofitted to an internal uh, a jet engine. Go ahead. This shows the jet commander. We're now retrofitting the technology too. Uh, we're going to try to break the record to go around the equator non-stop and turn it 90 degrees and go from north to south pole with it. So we're going to show demonstrations that we have, in fact, available viable answer to the energy problem using water as fuel. Go ahead. This shows a closer example of the jet engine where all we do is replace the injectors in the jet engine and hook, link it up to the computer systems, which now will control the, uh, the production of the gas and the hydrogen fracturing technology. Go ahead. This shows a cluster array of the rocket engines. Go ahead. Go ahead with the uh, videotape. Thank you. After the uh, videotape, we'll ha I'll open it up for uh, questions and answers. How soon and how much? <laughs> All right. The average cost, it looks like, to retrofit to an existing car will be roughly around $1,500. It looks like around $3,500 for trucks. made an announcement today in Colorado Springs. He says he's come up with a device that will hook up to any engine and allow it to run on good old H2O. News 13's Kurt Goff tonight on the possible impact of the water fuel cell. Stanley Myers says the answer to dependence on foreign oil lies all around us. In seawater, tap water, and rainwater. Any kind of H2O, he says, can power just about every type of engine. How? With the water fuel cell. It fits in the palm of his hand, but it could revolutionize the world. You're talking about a pollution-free, totally new source of energy, the voltage disassociation of water. The fuel cell converts water into a gas, hydrogen oxygen, which is released in the form of thermo-explosive energy. So the water fuel injector simply replaces the spark plug. We hook it to a hydrogen computer system, which regulates and meters the flow going into the injector. It processes the water in such a way to release its thermo-explosive energy and does the tubular array exciters or voltage zones are immersed in natural water, forming the water fuel cell. Once energized, the gases are quickly generated on demand, releasing energy in the form of hydrogen gas that is two and a half times more powerful than gasoline. Once the fuel cell meets the energy demand, switch off the voltage zones, terminating the gas. You are now witnessing, in the truest scientific terminology, 
the ability of burning ordinary water under control means. The temperature produced exceeds 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The quenching circuit prevents anti-spark back while hydrogen gas is rendered safer than natural gas. Increased voltage on demand increases flame size, increases BTU capacity. The heat energy shown is two and a half times greater than that of gasoline and burns three times faster. Because of this, the gas energy can now be used to run your car on water. Six, Columbus. This is Action 6 News, a 6 o'clock report with Tom Ryan and Gail Hogan substituting for Michelle Galeon, Larry Cosgrove with the weather, and Steve Minnick Sports. Let's get back on land to top our news here at 6 o'clock. An age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explained, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Meyer started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. And we have calculated that if we t take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Meyer's invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The day it happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. I'm Ralph Robin. Thank you. Uh, as you've seen in the uh, videotape, when I started back in 1975, I didn't have any white hair. Now, is there anyone here that uh, doesn't uh, believe that you're going to fight a lot of battles to bring it in? Now, we have fought a lot of battles to legalize the technology to bring in this, uh, to use water as fuel. I have over 25 major patents uh, already issued. There's 42, 42 major patents applied, 30 or 25 or 26 of them now have been allowed throughout the entire world. And as a result of this, it gives me the legal rights to bring out the technology. We are in the latter stage of the pre-engineering of the technology. 
because of my engineering background, it gave me the abilities to take it and design it to get it to a point to get it into mass production. Uh, in the very next uh, ensuing months, going into July, hopefully, if there's no more stoppage or preventage or slowdown in our uh, uh, attempt to get the technology in, then hopefully we'll have the dune buggy out under pre-engineering and also the uh, Alaskan Bushmaster. But you know, the reason why I'm here today is that we can invent and develop, as the Lord has shown me, to take this technology and to use water as a fuel to get it out to stabilize our economy. You see, we're all in the same boat, and if we don't do this, we're not going to eat. We're not going to tell about it, even in, in trying to cancel. Many people talk about all the problems that we have, and very few give the answers. But now I impart that the same responsibility the Lord has given unto me. He says, greatly I have given unto you, and greatly I expect in return. I have turned down over a billion dollars, cold cash, from our friendly neighborhood Arabs, never to do anything and stop on this technology. But the purpose is, you know, we pay out over $200 billion. <laughs> we pay out over $200 billion to the Arabs for petrol oil to maintain our industrial base. They would pay $200 billion to keep this type of technology off. So now I've imparted this, tech, this responsibilities to you. The only way that we're going to bring it in, and the history has shown time and time again, it's only going to come in through you and I. So I impart this responsibilities to you. We can invent and develop the technology. We can go through and fight all of our battles and our warfare and to win. But in the final analysis, it's going to come up to you. And you're going to have to make the decision whether or not you want this type of technology to come in and perhaps solve the environmental pollution problems, perhaps keep food on the table and keep industry alive and to be able to, to help clean up the environment so that we can stay on this little planet, which we call the spaceship. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you.